Hi everyone, Dennis Foley with Acoustic Fields. <laughs> Today we're going to talk about why acoustic treatment room kits, kits don't work. I think a better way to say this is misapplied. I think there's nothing wrong with the kits that are on, in the marketplace. It's that people don't understand how to use them. I think if you boil it and synthesize it all down, it's misapplication. That's the whole situation. People do not understand the physics of sound, and they are misled continually about it. And I think they buy a kit, they've been told it'll do a certain thing, they build it according to the drawings, and they install it and it doesn't work. So there's a disconnect between the build process and the application process. And there's a multiplicity of reasons for that. They do not use the correct kit for the issue. That's mainly, uh, I think, where the disconnect is. They don't use the proper rates and levels of absorption for their particular issue. And they're confused. I get it. There's a lot of misinformation out there. There's a lot of misinformation about everything. So you have to weed through it. It would be great if people had more science and math background because they could see through this nonsense real easily if they did, but they don't, so they're misled, and that's the problem. Sound absorption and sound diffusion are the only two technologies. We have kits for both. We have kits for sound diffusion, and we have kits for sound absorption, and I think we've sold thousands of them, okay? And people are very happy with the results because they know once they build it, what to do with it and where to place it in the room because we assist with that process. It's a step-by-step -step process. Building things for the sake of building things makes no sense. You have to build the right tool for the right uh, issue that you have in your room. And there's only two. There's only absorption and diffusion. Then you got to break absorption up into low frequency and middle and high because these are completely separate technologies. And there's where a lot of people get confused also. They think you can use middle and high frequency absorption technology for low frequencies, and you can't. The material types just don't function uh, pressure versus reflections. So lower frequency is a pressure-based technology, and you have to use, or pressure-based phenomena, you have to use a pressure-based technology. And that's just the way it is. Middle and high frequency uh, sound absorption deal is airflow. You got to have airflow across the surface area. We always tell people our foam is gray. That's the only color it comes in because that's the color that it ends up being after the manufacturing process is complete. We've tried putting pigments in it and changing the color of it, but it impacts performance and I simply won't have that. So what is your option if you're not happy with the gray? Well, you cover it with fabric. Now, the minute you cover it with fabric, what do you do? You reduce the airflow, right? Because you put a layer of fabric between the foam and the air that's going to be contacting the foam. So you're going to slow down the amount of air that crosses the surface. If you do that, you're going to hinder the performance of the product. We do a lot of uh, churches, and if they cover the foam with fabric, you always have to calculate another 10 to 15% more surface area coverage because you reduce the airflow with the fabric to make it pretty. I get it. But a lot of times, there's not even enough surface area in the church to manage the issues and then when you restrict the airflow, you even need more surface area coverage. So if you don't have enough in the first place and then you do something which causes you to need more, you're really between a rock and a hard place and you'll never get the, the desired results. How low does it go and how much does it get? Rate and level. Level is how low does it go. Rate is how much does it get. I always tell people, anybody can design a box that goes down to 40 hertz. I mean, you can empirically do that all day long with a calculator. It's not that difficult. But the difficult part is, is how much energy do you get at each 
frequency that's the key and that relates directly to the material that you use inside the cabinet or the absorber so all of these things matter and all of these things have to work together it's complicated and you need a strategy and you need tactics to supplement the strategy and it's a step-by-step -step process i always tell people the elevator to success is out of order you've got to take the stairs one step at a time and you have to be cognizant of that process okay it's just important people not uh, apply correctly we already talked about that broadband diaphragmatic absorber this is the absorption we use for low frequency energy why do we use diaphragmatic pound for pound it's the most powerful of the three we have hemholtz and membrane membrane is kind of a second cousin to diaphragmatic um, goes can go low but doesn't get much hemholtz is two frequency specific and you need a lot of them we've used hemholtz in the past as a fine tuning device but we use broadband first because broadband can cover a lot of frequencies our ACDA series is strong from 30 to 300, which is the frequency range you're going to find, the low frequency range, that's a problem in 90% of the rooms. So this is why it goes real strong. Now, you say, well, it goes higher on your website. Yes, because it has foam on the face. So that's why we get the 30 to the 6300. It's very broad, man. So we use broadband absorbers inside the room bring the response more in line and then if you need to notch and, and tweak you can use Hemholtz. But Hemholtz is very frequency specific with not a big rate of absorption so you need a lot of units so you have to be careful with that. We have our build plans for the BDA series and that's our broadband diaphragmatic absorber which is the same technology as our ACDA 10 series only in a build plan form. So you can build the same technology we have in our production units. And we offer carbon and foam technologies, which are our two proprietary technologies, to supplement that build. Pressure is around the perimeter of the room. Think of your room as a box of energy. The energy wants to leave the room. So it's going to crash up against the walls. Some of it's going to go through the walls. Some of it's going to be reflected back into the room. And some of it's going to be absorbed. There's three things that happen. And all of that has to be taken into consideration. No product is perfect. No product works 100%. If companies tell you that, they're lying. Because it just doesn't happen. Okay? You have to get the most horsepower per square foot as you can. So that will mean you, you need less units in the room. But the boundary, the pressure surface areas of the room are all around the boundaries. That's why we use our ACDA series, our carbon panels, around the perimeters of the room. You can also use other uh, products inside the room to manage pressure. But as a general rule, that's your starting point, is the perimeter and the boundaries of the room. Foam frame panel, we have a product that just simply is our foam with a wood frame around it. You can see it in the, the foam ladder on our website. I think it's product number 11 in the shop section. So that is an easy product to build. It's just simply a wood frame, like a picture frame. You ever go to these uh, framing stores and, and you build your own frame around a picture that you have? We used to do that. I don't even know if they have them anymore. But basically, it's the same process. Why a wood frame? Don't need it. You can simply you know, double-sided tape the foam to the wall if you want to. But if you want a more rigid structure that you can hang, you put a piece of wood around it. The foam is not rigid enough to stand on its own, and it comes in large sheets, four and a half by six and a quarter feet. So it's a big sheet. You can cut it if you want, easy to cut. But you put the wood frame around it, it gives you support for the foam, and allows you a rigid surface to hang it, you know, like a picture on the wall. What do we got? Use four wall and ceiling reflections. This is another issue. There's plenty of kits out there that you can build, but you got to apply the right kit to the problem. 
And you got to cover enough surface area in the room. That's the key. Putting one panel or two panels here or there is not going to do it. And please don't put panels because you have space to place them. That is never a good criteria for getting the highest resolution that you can out of the room. Okay. We've got to deal with reflections. You got to quantify and qualify all your issues before you start building. I get calls all the time from people like, I got to build stuff. I got to build stuff. I want to build stuff. Okay. But have a strategy. Know why you're building, what the reason is you're building it, and what you're building. I mean, I can't tell you all the people that we get calls from, especially with barriers. I don't know where all this misconception with noise has come from, but we get calls every day from people who say, well, I went on the internet, and the minute I hear that, I go, oh, we're in trouble already when it comes to noise. And I did this, I did that, and it didn't work. It can't work because you didn't develop the proper structure to, to deal with the noise that you have, the frequency and the amplitude of the noise. So building for the sake of building is kind of crazy, but people do it all the time. Here's the problem with that and noise. Most of the time, you've got to tear it out and start over. And who wants to do that? Materials are too expensive. Time is too valuable. You don't want to be de doing demo work, you know, in a building. So what do we got next? You got to look. If there was anything that could be said that summarized everything about problems, it's frequency and amplitude. The frequency and the amplitude of the problem will tell you everything about the solution. But people don't seem to understand that. The frequency and the amplitude, where it's located in our human hearing abilities, if you will, and how strong it is, determines what you build, what kind of kit you use, and with noise, what kind of barrier technology you're going to use. So you got to identify the frequency and the amplitude of the problem. Think about it this way. You're not feeling well. You go to the doctor. What's the first thing they do? I've been to lots of doctors with cancer, so I know the process completely. They take blood. They want to look at what's going on with the biochemistry inside your body. We have to know what's going on with the room. We have to know the frequency and the amplitude of the problems in the room. When it comes to noise, we have to know the frequency and the amplitude of the noise that's getting into the room. We also have to know the frequency and the amplitude of the noise that's leaving the room. All of that has to be calculated. All of that has to be incorporated into a strategy. Once you have the strategy, then you assign the tactics. Building using kits is a tactic. It's not a strategy. And this is, I think, where people end up wasting a lot of time, money, and effort. Every room boundary surface is different. When you use calculators to calculate the modal issues in a room, and you go all the way through the frequency response, and most low frequency issues are this 30 to 300, and you start looking at every surface area of the room, you'll see there's a different frequency and amplitude of, of the issue. You may have a 40 cycle problem, floor to ceiling. You may have a 50 cycle problem, side wall to side wall. You could have a 60 cycle problem, front to rear wall. So you have to know the frequency and the amplitude of the problem so that you can apply any kind of kit that you've chosen to build for that problem. For example, you have a 40 cycle problem on the front wall, so you want to use our Foam technology for that? No, because foam is not a low frequency absorption technology. You want to use our BDA, which is our diaphragmatic absorber. That's the product that you want to use. That's the tactic you want to use towards the strategy. So I hope this helps. Why are uh, people think, you know, these treatment kits don't work? I think most of them do, at least the ones I've seen. I know ours do. But most of the ones that I've seen will work if you apply them correctly. 
So you can go to our website and see all the kits. I think they're in the first row of the shop and you can see all those. But before you buy those kits and start building, make sure you know what you're doing. Make sure you know why you're building the kit. Fill out the room form. We work with DIY people with the room forms all the time. I get it, things are expensive. People can build it themselves and save the labor costs. If I build it for you, I have to pay our people to build it. It's a business. They have to be paid. They have families to support. I mean, this is just how the whole process works. So DIY can be a really valuable tool for those that have smaller budgets and have the time to build. I always tell people, if you're gonna build our products, have three to five years building experience in a full shop, or you'll get really frustrated. For example, the filter assembly that supports the carbon inside our diaphragmatic absorbers has 30 some parts. So there's a lot of prep work. You're gonna cut a lot of pieces before you start the assembly process. Then the finishing process if you wanna make it pretty. So you gotta have a strategy. You gotta have a strategy in the unit that you're assigning to the problem, and you have to have a strategy for building the units. We have a lot of people that use our carbon filters in DIY builds, and building carbon filters, you need a lot of them in a room because they go between the studs. So it's more production work. You're gonna build the same thing over and over and over again. So when they build the first one, it's called the first article of inspection. I have them send me a picture of it and tell me how they built it. And if it looks right, then they can continue on and build the others. So we'll assist you at every step of the way. So you're not wasting time, energy, and money. You just don't want to do that. Why acoustic treatment room kits don't work? I think most of them do, but the application of them is where the disconnect occurs. I hope this helps. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video, and if you liked it, please give us a thumbs up. We also have a newsletter that you can subscribe to, so please do that because we offer special price discounts to only those on our newsletter. And then don't forget about our forum. We have started a forum on our own website where people ask questions, and I usually get a chance every couple days to look at it. There's an interchange between people on the forum, and we'll give you real answers uh, on a regular basis, so that'll help you. Thank you.